Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 10th part of the Exchange 2013-2019 Coexistence videos in Azure. And just to recap on the previous part, we configured our Exchange 2013 and 2019 URLs. As you can see, I'm on the uh, virtual directories here. How did I get to the virtual directories? You log into the Exchange Admin Center, you click on Servers, Virtual Directories, and then you can obviously specify the server and you can configure your virtual directory from here except for auto discover and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our certificates so in our previous certificate we configured our ssl certificate if you want to call it that um, and we sent it off to a known um, certificate authority which in this case was digicert and as the certificate expired, I had to renew it this morning, so which I've done. So now that the certificate is valid for another year, you can see services are assigned. We now need the certificate to be on our 2019 server. Because we're using the same namespace, it's actually quite easy. If we were using a different namespace, we could use a wildcard cert or we could have a completely different SAN cert. So the easiest way to actually do this is we can export certificate from our 2013 server and then we can import it onto our 2019 server so i'm going to click on export by clicking the three dots here now you'll notice on the top here i'm connecting to my 2019 server so any export that i do is going to go to the 2019 server not to the 2013 server so obviously i'm going to put in localhost c dollar and I'm going to call this um, SSL cert.pfx and I'm going to give this a password and I'm going to click OK. Okay, so I've now exported the certificate with a private key. So take note that if this was a CRT file or a CR file, you obviously wouldn't export the private key. But in this case, because it's a PFX file, it will have the private key. So now what I do is I select my 2019 server from the dropdown and I can click import and I can now go to localhost C dollar SSL cert.pfx and put in the password and press enter. Now, obviously, it's going to ask me what server I want to put this on. If you had multiple servers, you could select multiple servers. In this case, I only have the one server and I can click on finish. Now, you'll notice that the certificate is now on my 2019 server. So if you go to IIS on your 2019 server, you'll see it listed there and the server certificates. Now, what we want to do is we don't have any services assigned to the certificate. So you can either click on the pencil button to edit the cert, or you can double click on it to open a new window. And what we do now is we go to the services tab and obviously I'm going to select um, all of these. Now take note, if you are using a wildcard cert and you selected pop and IMAP, you will get an error because you have to set it to the X509 certificate from PowerShop. So just be aware of that. I do have those configurations or scripts on my blogs, everythingpowershell.com and collaborationpro.com if you want to go and have a look there. And if I click save now, it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite the default SMTP certificate, which I do. Clicking on yes. And now we can see that we have a valid certificate still, it's not saying invalid or revocation check failed and it's now got these services assigned. Now generally what I do is after I've done this I reboot the server so that the changes take effect because we also set the um, virtual directory URLs those changes will also need to be taken effect. You can do a IS reset if you wanted to but I personally prefer to um, do a reboot because then I know that everything has been written and stamped and the configuration will still be there. 
In the next section, we're going to look at um, mailbox moves from 2013 to 2019 using the uh, Exchange Admin Center or using PowerShell. See you in the next section. Thank you very much.